Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to talk about crafting ward gear. Ward is a new defensive mechanic that was added in 3.15. Uh, it's pretty niche and it is best in conjunction with the extremely rare and extremely expensive flask Olroth's Resolve, which you can see on the screen at the moment. Uh, this is currently trading for something in, in the range of 25 Exalted Orbs in the Trade League. Uh, and is something you're going to have to obviously find through extreme luck for yourself if you're in solo self-bound. Most players won't have this, uh, but it is the strongest single thing you can do in conjunction with ward. And what it does is it turns ward, while this flask is active, uh, it turns your ward into a flat 30% uh, damage reduction against every source of damage that you take, uh, as long as that is a hit and not damage over time. So this is the single best way, but it's not the only thing you can do. And there's a whole lot of information. There's a website called PoEDB, which a lot of players may be familiar with, especially people subscribed to my channel, uh, that outlines what mods can roll on various items. However, one thing that you'll notice, if you say, look at boots, uh, you'll see that the links here link to strength, dex, int, strength, dex, strength, int, or dex, int ones. And there is no way to select ward boots. What you'll need to do in order to find the ward items is have a look in the URL up above. Uh, and if we just jump into the boots section and go to say the strength and intelligence boots. So these are the ones that have both armor and energy shield by base. You'll see up the top that the URL is periodb.tw forward slash us forward slash mod dot php question mark. And then there's cn equals boots. So that means that the category is boots. And then tags equals str underscore int underscore armor. The only tag that the ward boots have is the word ward. So what you want to do is just delete that manually and type in ward, and then you will be able to go to the ward specific list. Hopefully this will be made a little bit more convenient in the future. But this lets you look at all of the possible mods that could roll uh, and determine what your sort of dream ward item would be. Uh, you can also have a look, a reminder at the various influence mods that are available on boots. Uh, and again, continue to sort of dream up what a perfect item would be. And then, of course, you'll then figure out what the what is a realistic thing you can settle for in reality. Uh, do keep in mind that in order to get an influence on these boots, you will need to use a uh, you will need to use a Conqueror's Exalted Orb. If you want to get Shaper or Elder influence onto it uh, by themselves, you will need to start the process with a Conqueror's Exalted Orb, whichever one of the four is cheapest, and then use the Harvest Craft that randomizes the influence on an item. Uh, and so each time you do that, you'll have a chance of getting, let's say that you wanted Shaper Boots. Alternately, if you want two influences, uh, then you'll need to start with a Conqueror's Exalt and then apply an Awakener's Orb in order to get yourself your two influence boots. Needless to say, that's not going to be worth doing except on the very best Runic Sabatons, which are the highest tier of these boots. Uh, and in most cases, it's probably still not going to be worthwhile. But I do think it's worth just at least considering the option of building some ward into your build as an alternative defensive layout to other ones that exist in the game. So, one thing you'll notice is that the same tiers exist of percentage increase ward as exist for energy shield. They have different names, but they're basically the same thing. But the tiers of flat added ward are actually are considerably higher than the same tiers would be for energy shield. So you see that goldsmiths, the second tier, is 52 to 69 ward, and whitesmiths, the top tier, is 70 to 84. And if we have a look at the equivalent mods on the intelligence one, so energy shield, uh, flat energy shield caps out at 49 for seething or 38 for pulsing. So the numbers are considerably higher. They're not quite double. There's something like 180% of what the, what the numbers are on the energy shield boots. And that reflects the fact that ward is an inherently slightly weaker mechanic than energy shield, uh, although with higher numbers, it can be quite good. It can take a lot of the edge out of a big single hit that gets through probabilistic defensive layers like dodge, spell dodge, uh, block, and the like. So, uh, if you're planning on getting a sense as to what the best way to craft these ideal boots or gloves or helmet is, uh, you want to jump across to the website Craft of Exile. Uh, Craft of Exile is a third-party tool that's been put out that is absolutely phenomenal when it comes to working out information related to crafting. Uh, and testing various theories. Now, Craft of Exile may not be 100% accurate on absolutely everything, uh, but in my experience, it's, it's very accurate without being absolutely accurate. So let's say this time you want to go with a Runic Crown. So we're going to click Helmet first, uh, and then we're going to click Helmet Ward, 
And then you have the options of various different types of crafting methods that you might want to use. So I'm just going to say that we're going to try and do this with fossils for the moment, and we'll let the website work out for us which fossils to recommend. What I want to do is say, okay, I want tier one uh, flat ward, and I want tier one percentage ward. Now, uh, this tells us that the minimum item level of the runic crown in question needs to be 84, otherwise this mod cannot roll at all. And we're having a look here and it shows you, you're 1 in 621 to hit this from a Chaos Orb, uh, but by using, using fossils you can get this to be tremendously more likely. It's still pretty uncommon, you're still looking 1 in 76 if you're using dense fossils, uh, and dense fossils will be the best. But if we hit Compute Best Solution here, oh sorry, Compute Best Selection here, it will have a quick think, and then it will spit out a list of both all of the raw efficiency, which is the minimum possible number of craft attempts, uh, and also the most efficient by cost based upon the current league uh, economy. And you'll see that just using dense fossils on their own is the best. Uh, for some reason, dense and scorched ends up being reasonably close to that. Uh, this does use estimates that can be on the high end for the cost of resonators. Uh, so do keep that in mind. It's based upon what the website thinks is a realistic estimate of the bulk purchase cost. Uh, but this can also give you a, a bit of intelligence on what can't be rolled together as well. So for instance, uh, flat to ward can't be rolled in conjunction with flat to ward with flat to life. So that hybrid mod can't be rolled on, oh sorry, no I'm incorrect there, that, that can't be rolled because you're using a dense fossil in this simulation. Uh, of course, if you're going to roll this in reality, you would also want um, on a helmet probably to have some other specific mods as well. Uh, and so that's something else you would then be able to consider. And then you'll be able to say, okay, you know what, I can do this. Or, you know what, that's too expensive. There is no way I can do that. Okay, so um, how do I suggest using ward in a build? Uh, I suggest that most builds don't use ward. Uh, however, I suggest that if you are able to get your hands on the Ulroth flask, a uh, very expensive Ulroth flask, then using it in conjunction with one or two pieces of ward gear will provide a very powerful defensive layer uh, for frequent small hits. This is the sort of thing that in the ultimatum meta would have been absolutely phenomenal, uh, but even in the current environment would still be quite useful. Additionally, uh, you can also use ward and in moderate amounts on a build that has a large, large, large percentage chance for enemy hits to miss you. So this can this would typically be a raider, and I would suggest that a lot of characters that are playing raiders should consider using ward gloves. Uh, not necessarily as the only option, but at least give them some thought, because I think you'll find that you will be able to uh, do a lot defensively by having, say, 350 points of ward on your gloves, uh, which you can do without massive investment. That can then take the sting out of some of the big hits you would otherwise take, uh, and then that can allow you to, uh, you know, to survive those big hits. Uh, and you can also conceivably use one of the cheaper uh, unique iron flasks, all of which are very good. Anyways, that's my first thoughts on crafting with ward. Uh, if you've got comments or questions, definitely fire away below. I do think that for most players, you're probably not going to want to use this tech, but it is something to at least just keep in mind and also just something to play around with over the course of the league. You know, once you've got your uh, character set up to a way that you're happy with them, uh, give something else a shot. But yeah, uh, leave your feedback below and may your Valobs have interesting results.